had some advancement with the, with the recording days because in those days, they had the old cylinder wax. They had a big box in the back, and they keep all these waxes in this box always heated up. And the, and the wax was pretty thick. And we only had one horn to, uh, to uh, catch all the music into the uh, cylinder to record. They didn't have, we didn't have microphones. This was days before microphones. And we had the conventional uh, uh, combination like three saxes and two trumpets and a trombone, piano, bass. And they had tuba, not bass, tuba. And the red banjo, which was banjo. The guitar was uh, unheard of. And we, that means we, that means the tuba and myself, had to sit way back in the studio because the tuba, when you when you blow the notes out of the tuba, it would, if it's too loud, when, when a needle would jump off the, off the cylinder and then have to start all over again. Very sensitive. And the banjo was the same thing. It was a penetrating instrument. So I thought of an idea one morning of bringing my guitar to the studio. And Sam said, what are you going to do with that? I said, well, Sam, I'm having so damn much trouble with the banjo. Let me try the guitar. I said, well, Nick, they won't hear it. I said, well, put me closer to the horn. So he got me right under the horn. Now, this is a great big horn. Visualize a great big horn like you, you, you see advertised at the Victor Phonograph Company. A great big horn with the dog and things like that. Well, that's what we had. So he put me under the horn, and the instrument uh, was there, and it was. And the, 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 the rhythm was, was more smoother, didn't have any trouble with the, with the needle jumping off the, off the, or out of the groove. And uh, so he says, you think that's all right, keep it in. So that was the beginning of me playing guitar on record days. Now that was about, uh, I would say that was around 1921 or 22, something like that. Then I played, uh, I played, I still worked with them for a while. Then I worked with Vincent Lopez for a while at the Peking Cafe on 45th Street. That was a hot spot. But in those days, Vincent Lopez was one of a very, very, he was very hot in New York. He couldn't do anything wrong. Was was there, was it around this time that you recorded Teasing the Frets? See, no, Teasing the Frets. Now that was done while I was working with Sam and with a different group, which is called, called Don Parker. Oh no, Teasing the Frets. I did that all by myself. And picking the guitar. On, picking the guitar. Yes. That was, that was on Passe Records. What were those sessions like? The sessions. Yeah, do you remember? The sessions were, uh, well, they were, uh, uh, as I said, they were from, a, from about 10 to 1 o'clock. The, te the teasing, the frets, and picking the guitar sessions? Uh, well, that, that was all by myself. Just, just all I had is the, uh, the, the musical director and, uh, and the technicians on, on, in the studio. When, else. Where were these recorded? In New York on, uh, at the Pathé uh, Phonograph Company on 42nd Street. Did you um, compose those tunes? Yes. Now, now, we think that those are the first uh, recorded guitar solos. I, 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 I seem to agree with you on that. Now, I haven't done any research work on it, but I think they were the first ones. 